Hey guys, Mark McMahon, Mark McMahon Real Estate here. Today I want to talk about how to accept offers in a frothy market. So, so when the market is really frothy, you're going to get a lot of offers on your properties. It's going to be overwhelming. You're going to get, we've, we've gotten properties that are getting 20, 30 offers right now, 60, 70 showings. And it's really hard to coordinate and it's really hard to pick an offer. So if you want to hear exactly how I do it, stick around. But if you could be so kind, please hit the like button. Please subscribe and sign up for notifications. Allie loves to see that. Thanks so much. All right, let's dig right in. Offers are coming in. You're getting FHA offers. You're getting conventional loan offers. You're getting all kinds of stuff and it's hard to pick. This guy wants to do a few days contingency on, uh, on inspection. This guy wants to do 30 days contingency on his loan. What do you pick? What do you do? Well, guys, here's the good news. You don't have to pick what they've offered you because you can counter offer. So there's a couple of things that we do here. Number one is we'll actually take a yellow pad like this and I will write down as Yuko, my wife, goes over all the offers. I'll write down the name of each person, how much they're going to offer, how many days to close, what is their down payment, what type of loan they have, and how much cash do they have. I always want to know that. If I know how much money they've got, I know how much we can work with them because with appraisals doing what they're doing right now, you want to make sure that they've got sufficient money in the bank to close above what the appraiser says that house is worth. So let me repeat that. If they don't have enough money in the bank to close above the appraisal price, we pretty much move on to the next guy. Here's why. When a market is going up, a lot of times the comps in the neighborhood are not going to keep up with what is appraising. So an appraiser comes out and he appraises what is already closed. And let's say the house is $100,000. The last three, uh, last three houses that closed were $100,000 that were close to what yours is. But we know that there's houses for sale and there's houses under contract because we've talked to the other agents because we know We've talked to the other agents and they've told us that there's offers now at 110 on these new houses that are on the market. So what does that do to our appraisal? It's going to raise it up, right? Okay. But they can't do that until it closes. They can take that into consideration, but they can't use it as a real comp. So how do we do that? How do we combat that as prices are going up quickly? We make sure that people have enough money in the bank to cover the difference between the $100,000 appraisal and the $110,000 that they covered. So what are they going to have to do? They're actually going to have to come up with that extra $10,000 to close the deal. Make sense? And that's above and beyond their original down payment. So we've got to make sure they've got that. And we've got to make sure that we get it in writing that they're willing to do it. So you need to counter offer and say things like, okay, I like what you've got here. I like the way your offer looks because you've got a lot of money in the bank. Uh, your people are well qualified. They've got a good FICO score and I like their down payment. But right now, appraisals seem to be coming in a little low because they can't keep up. Do you agree to come up with the, uh, the, the difference between the appraisal and the amount of money that you offer? Do you agree to that? And they will come back with a counter offer and you'll go back and forth. But you want to make sure and put that in there. And that's how you accept offers, guys. You don't just go with an offer and go, okay, that's it. You're going to have to, like a surgeon, you're going to have to carefully, surgically take apart each offer. What we do then is we've got, let's say, 20 offers. We'll pick the five that we like the most. And we will counter those five. And we'll let everybody, we'll nicely let everybody else know that we'll keep them as backup but uh, that we've accepted, uh, we've, we've countered five or six offers and that's that. Now you can choose to say whatever you want. You can actually send out a counter offer to everybody and then everybody can respond. But I choose to work with the ones that are the best to begin with. If someone comes in low ball, I don't really necessarily want to play a game with them. There's too many people out there making offers right now. So I'll go with the five best. And then we'll call each agent before we send out our counter offer and say, hey, look, this is kind of where we're at right now. What do you think? We want to get a gauge on where their buyer is and how much they're willing to come up or how much they're willing to tighten up their contingencies like inspections and loans and appraisals. All right, those, those contingencies are super, super important. If they're stretching them all the way out to 30 days and 17 days and seven days and whatever, we don't want that. 
You know, we want an inspection back within five days and a list of repairs if they're going to ask for them. We want to make sure that that, that uh, uh, loan is approved, so we don't want to take 30 days for that. We want to have an, a loan approval. Loan contingencies are removed within, you know, 14 days, 10 days, as soon as they can get it done. We don't want them to hold my house up. If for some reason they don't uh, uh, qualify, we don't want them to hold our house up, right? We don't want to take the house off the market for all that time just to find out they don't, don't, don't uh, qualify. So if that's the case, you want to make sure and tighten that up so you can get it back on the market if they don't. All right, guys, I hope you found this helpful. This is um, a really strange market when things go up and it will happen. Like if you're looking at this YouTube video five years from now, we may be going through this again. So I hope you find it helpful. But always be aware. Always, like I said, you can do a spreadsheet. You can do whatever you want to. But compare everything so that you understand everybody's position. And then make the phone calls so that you can hear the real truth. Because usually the first offer isn't the best offer, right? And then number three, analyze everything and make a decision on the, on the best five. And uh, number four, contact each one. Number five, put it together, decide who you're going to go with and go in hard. All right, guys, please subscribe, hit the like button and sign up for notifications. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Hey guys, check out these two videos. They're really going to help you on your investment journey. I'm also on Instagram, tons of great video content there. Really good stuff. Please subscribe. I'll see you next time.